Well, I realize uh, Rylan has some hips. They weren't lined up on both sides. They were a little off. I thought I was standing up straight, and my parents told me, you're not straight. <laughs> my parents, I, my parents said, stand up straight, and I'm like that. <laughs> so after we made an appointment with the pediatrician, um, they definitely noticed right away, and they referred us to an orthopedic surgeon. And then that's when we did the MRI. They basically wanted to just put him in a brace, a 24-hour Boston brace. And then he started at the age of six. He started wearing that every day. Everything just happened so fast. And as a parent, it's something you want to be in denial of it. And for a long time, it was just listening to different doctors, do this, do that, do this. And I said, OK, OK, OK. And I really never dug into it until fast forward, we're moving from Tennessee to Florida, and we're seeing a new doctor, and things are just beginning to get worse. Our doctor, orthopedic surgeon, prescribed a Providence brace, which is only a nighttime wearing brace, and that was because he said it was hot outside. Kids don't want to wear them during the day, so we took his word for it. At first, it went from 29 degrees, and then uh, the Boston brace corrected it a little bit, down to 21 degrees, and then he started wearing the Providence brace only eight to 10 hours a night, and it went up to 46 degrees. The orthopedic surgeon, uh, he started mentioning surgery very nonchalantly, so we were kind of like thrown off a little bit. Like, no, that's not really what we want to do here. Juvenile and adolescent scoliosis is, has an unknown variable, and the unknown variable is how much a curve progresses over time. There's no test, there's no exam, there's no x-ray, there's nothing I can do to say if I see a 15 or 20 or 25 degree curve, that what's it going to be when they stop growing? Because of that, our treatment model when it comes to scoliosis is like a very reactive model, meaning they want to see curves worsen and become severe before they start treating them. And so therefore, patients get frustrated because they start off with these small curves and they've seen these curves get larger and they wasn't even treated like a big deal until it's big enough to put a, to put a rod in their spine and have to have surgery. Therefore, that's why I say treating curves smaller and younger is better because if you can treat a small curve, you're never going to have a large curve. And so therefore, our philosophy is completely different than the traditional approach to scoliosis treatment. The surgery is where I felt like I needed to protect him because I knew that if he went through the surgery, it, was, it wasn't just going to be a one and done type of thing. It was going to be multiple surgeries. I knew that it, he was going to suffer for this for the rest of his life with back pain, and I didn't want that for him. When we look at the options in traditional scoliosis treatment, watch and wait, a Boston brace or a Providence brace is just trying to slow down the progression and then surgery, is because that's the only training they have. And these are because scoliosis is managed by surgeons and surgeons have an expertise and a fantastic expertise in doing surgery. You know, that's what they spend all their time in training. They've gone to medical school, spent, spent years and years in perfecting and how to put screws and rods into a child's spine. And if I ever have surgery of my spine, I, don't, I want a surgeon that that's all they do. There's no way that surgeon can spend the same amount of time learning how to treat curves conservatively using therapy, rehabilitation, exercise, bracing, home rehab. They, they, they can't be an expert at both because it requires too much time to become good at both of those things. So therefore, I'm not a surgeon, but my entire time I spend learning and advancing this conservative approach to scoliosis treatment just as much time as they spend advancing the surgical time. And that's the reason why they just say wait until, it's, until the curve becomes bad enough to do surgery. Well, as a father, surgery is the last thing you want for your children. So the route that we were taking, it was only getting worse. And the way the orthopedic surgeons talk, it's around 50 degrees, that's when they want to do all the surgery. And there's just so many horror stories out there, so we weren't, we were trying to figure out, there's got to be other ways. There can't just be stick rods in my kid and then call it a day. And what's concerning is because a juvenile case will eventually turn into an adolescent patient. So when we're looking at Ryland, he's sitting here, you know, nine, ten years old with a relatively severe scoliosis. You know, for boys, they're going to hit puberty around 13. That's when they go through fast growth. And when they go through fast growth, they go through rapid progression. So when you're sitting there 
10 years old, 45, 46 degree curve, and you're about to hit, you're a few years away from hitting adolescence, where you're gonna go through rapid growth where curves can pro progress very quickly. I mean, he can have a 90, 100 degree curve when he goes through the adolescent phase and growth. So it's very, very concerning. And just trying to hold the curve at 45 degrees isn't gonna work. You have to reduce this curve so therefore when they get into adolescent, they're not walking in with a 45 degree curve, you know, they're walking with like a 30 or a 25. I felt relief when I found Dr. Nelva's office and when we came in and talked to him, and he pulled up his computer and he showed us results and I was flooded with emotions. He was trying to tell us like, this is what we do, this is where he could go. And I was crying in his office and I knew, I knew we were right where we were, we were supposed to be. I think it was about day three that Dr. Delda does just to see a progress report. And we saw the changes and how quickly his body responded to therapy and when we when we got that, it pushed him to want to do better when he was up in therapy. And he's like, Mom, you don't need to come anymore. I got it. Mom, you're okay. And he just, he enjoyed it. He really enjoyed it. And it just, it was relief knowing that he was in a place where he felt comfortable and he didn't complain ever because he knew, he knew there was going to be results. And when he saw it, that's when it really like hit all of us that, okay, this is incredible. This is something that we never thought would ever happen. After the two weeks, it went from 46 degrees to 29 degrees. So we, I mean, he's way away from surgery. So as long as we keep doing what we're doing with the brace and his maintenance at home, I mean, his curve could eventually, hopefully get to zero. Over the years of him going through all this uh, brace wearing and all that stuff, we're kind of like, why didn't we find this sooner? Why don't more people know about this process? It's, it's pretty amazing to know that we're not even close to surgery.